I spoke with Taylor. He claims he never heard of Russian or the other two. He said the super must have put him up to it. No, Dennis is stupid. He's not that stupid. Well, Taylor isn't either. We're not going to have any convenient check stubs to tie him to this. Mr. Mustafi. Look, it's all right. They're not going to be back. Tonight, maybe. What about tomorrow? Am I supposed to sit in my apartment and wait for somebody to try to kill me? Listen, if you leave now, you will lose your home. The best thing we can do is stand here and fight. You'll fight. I'm not like you. Some things you can fix. Some things maybe you shouldn't try. I appreciate you seeing me, Mr. Potter. You want something? Oh, yes, sir, I do. Um, my neighbors, your former tenants, they're being evicted from their homes. It would appear that Mr. Taylor has been less than honest about his intentions. Uh, disappointing. Oh, yes, it is. He intends to demolish the building, the entire block, in fact. Uh, this gives you pause. Huh? You're beginning to wonder if you did the right thing. No, sir. Nonsense! You saw glory. Little people rising up, throwing off the yoke of tyranny. The people don't like to succeed, Fraser. It's a lot of responsibility. <clears throat> Think of it. You tell a man he's going to die, he can accept that. You've given him a certainty. Uh, you ask that same man to take a gamble, uh, to risk everything he has, uh, even if the prize was a fountain of youth itself. He'd sooner roll over in the ditch than take that chance. Not every man. No, 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 no. Some are just plain dense, like you. Hmm. Sir, I would like you to buy the building back from Mr. Taylor. You would? Yes, I would, sir. And waste money on lawyer's fees? Don't be stupid. I made a handsome profit on that sale. And as for the building, it's a dump. Not worth the land it's standing on. Ah. If I hadn't found me a buyer, I'd have raised it myself. 
just to save the taxes. <laughs> you can leave now. Yeah. Throw another log on before you go. It's cold in here. Yes, I would imagine it is. Get out! Ray, do you think I expect too much from people? Well, take our climbing up the side of this building, for example. Okay. Is the building on fire? Ah, uh, no. Is there a helpless person trapped up on the roof? No. Is there a hostage to rescue? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. And we're climbing this building because? Oh, I see. Because I expect too much from people. Exactly. Well, that and the fact that the doors to the council chambers were closed until after question period, this seemed the only way that we could gain access. Ranger! Ranger! Oh, sorry. Here. All right? Yeah, no problem. That concludes the scheduled agenda for this meeting. We'll now proceed to open the floor for question period. Will anyone who wishes to address the council please form a line to the left of the podium? How did you get in? Wait to be recognized. I opened the, the back chair. door. First speaker, please state your name. Listen, I spoke to the chairwoman. She said please no go. Proceed. Turns out Taylor has legal building permits, legal demolition permits, and I suspect he's greased some pretty significant pops. Mm. We are under Sorry. attack by an enemy so insidious that if we don't act immediately, we risk everything. All the work that we do as a community, all the time we put Excuse in me. to make it safe for people to live in is now in grave danger. It's a threat, I tell you, a threat to every man, woman, and child living in the greater Chicago area. Certainly, there are those who will scoff, those who will uh, jeer, but they are urban dwellers. They have yet to experience the scourge of the suburbs, the green death, the blight we call crabgrass. Time's up, buddy. Uh, excuse me, according to parliamentary law, I have the floor. You have the floor? Yes, I have the floor. He's right, Ray. He does have the floor. Huh. Oh. Now he has the floor. You kicked him. No, I didn't. The man is unconscious. He lost him. The chair recognizes... Uh, Benton Fraser, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Uh, no, I'm not. I mean, uh, not now. At least not, not, not officially. I mean, ordinarily, yes, I am. I am uh, a mounted policeman, but I'm not here in any official capacity. May I ask why you are here? Uh, yes, Mr. Ch Madam Chair. Sir, um, <clears throat> earlier this evening, a man told me that people would prefer their own death rather than risk everything for an ideal. And this is something I find extremely difficult to reconcile. And you came here because... I didn't know where else to go. You are the people's elected representatives, and if we can't trust your judgment, who can we trust? What exactly is your quandary, sir? My neighbors are being evicted from their homes. Now, a certain businessman, Mr. John Taylor... Mr. Taylor's development plans are a matter of record, Constable, and if you need further explanation, I suggest that you speak to the city clerk's office. I'm well aware of Mr. Taylor's plans, sir. No, my question actually is for you. Why did you approve them? Do you represent anyone besides yourself, Constable? Sir? Uh, these other tenants, your neighbors, uh, where are they tonight? Well, they are not here tonight. They were unable to attend. So you're only here to speak for yourself and these... 50 tenants, for all we know, they may not even exist. No, I assure you, sir, that, that really is not the situation. Time. Excuse me? Time. Time's up. Step down. 
I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. Each speaker has one minute, Constable, and I'm afraid if you wish to say any more, you'll have to come back tomorrow night. May we have the next speaker, please? Uh, point of order, Madam Chairman. I will get to you, sir. But my question... I'm afraid those are the rules. Step down, please. But, but I, I... No. Step down, please. No, I'm afraid I can't do that. This is my minute. You are using my minute. No, no, no. You see, your minute was incredibly boring, so it was canceled. Constable, I'm going to have to insist that you leave the podium. No. Excuse me? With all due respect, sir, I refuse to yield the floor. Point of personal privilege, man. That man is exhausted. Oh, God, a filibuster. He's going to filibuster. What? He's going to talk us to death. We'll be here all night. I don't have time for that. The city councilman, for God's sakes. Got a golf game in the morning. You know you're wasting your time. Possibly. The best you're going to get is a bad case of laryngitis. Probably. Lozenges. Cherry flavor. On my way. Thank you, Carla. Could have packed the place These if you waited the for the morning edition. What about a TV crew? And was the exclusive? No. My grandmother gave me that book for my birthday. Do one to thy neighbor. You would have thought at least some of them would have shown. But my grandmother failed to see how rooting about in the dirt with a toy bulldozer was going to broaden my horizons. I was resentful, naturally. So the next day I took the present and I attempted to feed it to a passing walrus. Successfully, I might add. Oh, God. At least you didn't start with Geronimo. Anybody want to make an easy 50? All right, how about a hundred? A hundred apiece. All you got to do is listen to some Canadian quote, an American revolutionary. Which revolutionary? Like it makes a difference? Hundred dollars upstairs. For my seventh birthday, I, I requested a go-kart, but I, I received a book. My eighth birthday, I wanted a Johnny Seven, but again, I, I received another book. On my ninth birthday, I wanted a guppy. But again, I received another book. And finally, by my 11th birthday, I realized that my toy box contained virtually no toys at all. Rather, it was lined with some of the most seditious reading material available through mail order. All right, anybody else? Come on, I got free money here. How the fuck to listen to some Canadian quote, American revolutionary? Thank you very much. Upstairs, council chamber. No, I haven't been drinking. Look. You got 10 minutes to get a camera crew down here, or I call WPOV and give one hell of a scoop. You know me, Jack. I wouldn't do that. My work is my bond. Fine. Hi. Hi, Mari, Mari, Mari. Hi. Mackenzie King here. Listen, you got 10 minutes to get a camera crew down to City Hall, or I call Jack over at WZMR and give him one hell of a scoop. No, I haven't been drinking. You always give money to strangers. This is better than money. This is a 1972 Buick Riviera. Or what's left of it. You should have kept the money. That summer, <clears throat> that summer my grandmother took me swimming. The water had risen to just above freezing. And I clung to her as we waded deeper into the river. I'd never before noticed the burn marks she had on her upper arms and on her shoulders. When I asked her how she'd come by them, she said simply that she'd been burned. Later, my father told me the full story. My grandmother was 19, and she was teaching in a small Inuit village when a fire swept through and it surrounded them. Their only means of escape was through a river that had been torn by rapids. And most of the ad adults died because they were too afraid to brave the water. But my grandmother was supported by an idea, and with this idea, she led the children deeper into the river. And they clung to her as she held on to the roots of a tree as it burned above them. And the heat was so intense that <coughs> it melted most of her hair and left second-degree burns on her upper body. If she had let go, they all would have been swept away. But she didn't let go, and they survived. My grandmother maintained that it was not the river that saved them, 
Rather, it was an idea. The heart of the conflict, more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Thomas Paine. Subsequently, I made a concerted effort to work my way through my grandmother's library, although I have to confess that You've got our attention, Constable. Proceed. Oh, come on! It's either you or old crabgrass. You're not fooling anyone. I thought one of these people live in my building. Well, how would you know? Did you take the time to shake their hands or learn their names? I have their names. There are files. Well, congratulations. I have camera crews. And in these halls, perception is nine-tenths of the law. I'll win this in court, and you know it. Oh, good, you're here. Give the chairman the list of the tenants' names. I couldn't find it. What? I looked through my files. All I could find was this. It's Elise. Potter gave it to me when he made me super. Ten years. No increase. It's got four years left to run. Well, at least you'll have a roof over your head, Dennis. You know, Detective Baker, you could be just a little nicer. If I still got a roof over my head, then so does he. And so does everyone who lives there. And I, I believe it was Geronimo who said, It is my land, my home, my father's land, to which I now ask to be allowed to return. No one can tear down that building, unless I say so. Huh? You're a good man, Dennis. Madam Chairperson, point of order. Some new evidence has come to light in this case regarding the tenants. Dennis, you realize you're fired. Hmm. Stuff it in your ear, Goldilocks. City Council hereby suspends Mr. Taylor's development plans until further notice. The eviction orders but are revoked. The world and all our woes loss of Eden till one greater man restore us and regain. He can stop now. Oh. Thank you. I can't believe I let you do this to me again. Well, I was uh, kind of surprised myself. Never again, understand? Understood. Good. Okay. 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 Goodbye. Oh, yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Th thanks. Thank you, kindly. You owe me. How much? How much? How much do I owe you? Oh, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Woman is completely irrational. Oh. oh, yes, I'm sorry, but we can always get you another one. Yes, I realize it was your favorite, but some things are worth the sacrifice. We uh, heard your place was a mess. You really should set a better example, you know. Understood. Come on. Painting, dusty. You want a garbage bag?
So what do you think? This is what you spent our savings on. Yeah. Five thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I bought it for you. Frey, it's a 1972 Buick Riviera. It's the car of your dreams. You bought it for me? Yeah. I mean, can't we both have the same dreams? <laughs> okay, so when do I get to drive it? When do you get to drive it? Yeah. Uh... When? All right, all right. Now. Okay. Well, not now, now. Oh. Not now, now. Maybe later now. I mean, like, never now? Like, come maybe on. not in your lifetime now? Oh, come on. Let's not go there. Come on. Let me kiss. Why? Because you love the car. I don't. You will. In your dreams. <laughs> Ray. Yes, Al. Well. I'll give you a thousand bucks. Ray. Ah, uh, come on, Al. It's all I got left. Come on. Deal. You get it washed. Northern sky will carry you away You know you have to leave here You wish that you could stay Support directions on this map But you're only going one way Do south That's the way I'm going Do I spoke with Taylor. He claims he never heard of Russian or the other two. He said the super must have put him up to it. No, Dennis is stupid. He's not that stupid. Well, Taylor isn't either. We're not going to have any convenient check stubs to tie him to this. Mr. Mustafi, look, it's all right. They're not going to be back. Tonight, maybe. What about tomorrow? Am I supposed to sit? Just to save the taxes. <laughs> you can leave now. Yes. Throw another log on before you go. It's cold in here. Yes, I would imagine it is. Get out! Ray, do you think I expect too much from people? Well, take our climbing up the side of this building, for example. Okay. Is the building on fire? Ah, uh, no. Is there a helpless person trapped up on the roof? No. Is there a hostage to rescue? Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. And we're climbing this building because? Oh, I see. Because I expect too much from people. Exactly. Well, that and the fact that the doors to the council chambers were closed until after question period, this seemed the only way that we could gain access. 
sit in my apartment and wait for somebody to try to kill me? Listen, if you leave now, you will lose your home. The best thing we can do is stand here and fight. You fight. I'm not like you. Some things you can fix. Some things maybe you shouldn't try. I appreciate you seeing me, Mr. Potter. You want something? Oh, yes, sir, I do. Um, my neighbors, your former tenants, they're being evicted from their homes. It would appear that Mr. Taylor has been less than honest about his intentions. Uh, disappointing. Oh, yes, it is. He intends to demolish the building, the entire block, in fact. And this gives you pause. Huh? You're beginning to wonder if you did the right thing. No, sir. Nonsense! You saw glory. Little people rising up, throwing off the yoke of tyranny. The people don't like to succeed, Fraser. It's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> Tell a man he's going to die, he can accept that. You've given him a certainty. Uh, you ask that same man to take a gamble, uh, to risk everything he has, uh, even if the prize was a fountain of youth itself, he'd sooner roll over in the ditch than take that chance. Not every man. No, 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 no. Some are just plain dense, like you. Hmm. Sir, I would like you to buy the building back from Mr. Taylor. You would? Yes, I would, sir. And waste money on lawyers' fees? Don't be stupid. I made a handsome profit on that sale. And as for the building, it's a dump. It's not worth the land it's standing on. Hmm. Ah, uh, if I hadn't found me a buyer, I'd have raised it myself. <laughs>